Desiring God, which is sort of my core main book, um, is a big book. And some people have found it heavy sledding. And so uh, I, I took the core message of it and put it in this little one called The Dangerous Duty of Delight, Daring to Make God Your Greatest Desire. It's 92 pages. And I really love this little book. It is, it is what I'd put into the hands of somebody who doesn't ever read 350-page books, but they might read uh, four or five chapters a night for a few nights and get the gist of this message. And um, the dangerous duty of delight does mean uh, delighting in God is not just optional, it's not just peripheral, it's not icing on the cake, it is a core duty. Delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. It's a, it's a command or as Paul says, rejoice in the Lord and again I say rejoice. He's commanding us. This is a duty and most of us don't think of, of delight as a duty and it can be devastating if you don't feel the delight and it can be liberating if you say nobody's ever told me God wants me to be happy in fact he wants me to be happy so much he commands me to be happy in him and then I call it dangerous because if you find God to be your supreme pleasure rather than security and safety and comfort and wealth and health and life you just might start living a very risky life. You might start caring for, for people so deeply and finding your joy so profound in doing good for others that it could, it could cost you your life. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, not with life. The steadfast love of the Lord is better than life. And so it's a deeply satisfying life that I'm commending here. And it is a profoundly dangerous life that I'm commending here. So if you, if you want the small, quick version that I think is not any less profound, I commend to you the dangerous duty of delight.